September 24th planning board meeting to order at 6.30 and um, I guess we're, it says here, Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, we can just, um, do you want to do approval of minutes? I'd like to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh yeah, we, we used to never do that, but it's up to the board. I, mean, I, I don't feel it's necessary, we've never done it. And we all took an oath, but it doesn't matter if we're The front door is locked, but the side door is open. Um, the handicap door is. I don't know. Oh, everybody's in the side door. I can go in. I don't know if it's open. I can Tell me slow everything down. <laughs> <laughs> See how good of an engineer you really are. How do we get inside this building here? So, right. so, um, anyway, okay, I'll do approval of uh, the nine ten minutes. from last meeting, a completeness and public hearing site plan, um, New Hampshire Liquor Store number 19-09 proposed site plan to construct a 12,000 square foot New Hampshire Liquor Store with associated utilities and site improvements on the 100 Market Basket Street property. So, would you like to... Thank you, yes. yes. Um, DCs are out, so yeah, the audience is tough to pick up. It is. Uh, my name is Brian Jones with Allen Major Associates. We are a group of land surveyors and civil engineers, uh, landscape architects, and um, we prepared the drawings for the site plan application. Uh, we did have opportunity to meet a couple weeks ago, and quick summary since our last meeting, uh, we had opportunity to respond to the town's peer review consultant, Keach Nordstrom Associates, they had written a comment letter and they subsequently uh, wrote a second letter stating that we have satisfactorily uh, addressed all of their conditions with uh, a couple outstanding items that uh, we can talk about this evening. One is that the project requires a septic permit and we do you know, obviously acknowledge that. We've uh, submitted the uh, septic plans to the town uh, Board of Health, and they have reviewed it, and I'm told that they have uh, approved it. We'll be filing with uh, the state in the coming next couple days, and uh, expect our septic approval in a week or two. They've been moving pretty quickly. So that's the first comment. The second has to do with uh, Tilton Northfield Water District. Uh, Mr. Keach points out that we do uh, need a water connection from them, and we've also reached out with them, met with them, and uh, that is under process, and, and uh, we concur that, that we do need a connection with them. 
the third item that Keach uh, points out is that the project requires a conditional use permit for um, impervious area within the groundwater uh, protection district. And that's any time a project exceeds 15%, uh, the project requires a conditional use permit uh, from the planning board. And um, the underlying zoning here is regional commercial. They allow a maximum of 75% coverage, uh, obviously because the uh, groundwater protection district has the more restrictive requirement, the conditional use permit is required. Uh, we are actually proposing much less than the 75% allowed under the commercial district. It's actually 39.8% that's on the drawings. And then the other element um, that I'd like to point out is that this property uh, was subject to previous um, site plan review by the town planning board. Um, I don't know if there were members here back in 2002 when Market Basket came in, but the project was presented as a master plan with uh, an out parcel in the location where this uh, New Hampshire liquor store is proposed. And as part of that master plan, they um, installed certain improvements, including the stormwater management system. So that detention basin that you see next to the road as you're driving in, that was sized to accommodate the development that we're now proposing. Um, and if you were to flip back to the previous site plan approval in their drainage analysis, they consider this whole area that the New Hampshire liquor store is proposed on as an impervious area directed towards the, that, that detention basin. So all that to say, that when the original site plan was designed and approved, it was queued up for development in this area. Um, the only thing I would further point out is they considered that whole area impervious. Well, obviously we're not doing all impervious. So this project actually is about 10,000 square feet less uh, than the previous iteration of site plan master planning that was in front of the town. Um, that is it of the peer review letter from Keach. Um, we are here, obviously, to answer questions. The architect is here. Um, like I said, I'm the civil engineer. I'm here to answer questions. And uh, we're very appreciative of your consideration uh, this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? Architect, want to speak to this matter of the groundwater? No. Do you have anything to add in general about the project? No. Just here. Super yeah. fun. First one, we might as well just tackle the groundwater. Um, so, it's to 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 recap what you were what you have said um, to make it absolutely clear, because I wasn't here last time either, but I didn't read through the information. And um, you're you're stating, according to the commercial. Uh, It's 30, what was it? Can you recap the whole sure. thing? Sure. So the, the commercial district allows lot coverage of up to 75%. So once we add the liquor store to this property, that brings the lot coverage up to 39.8. Anything over 15% within the, the groundwater protection district, which is an overlay, requires a conditional use permit. Uh, 
um, and that gives the board opportunity to consider things like stormwater management. So in this case, since the project was master planned for development in this area, the detention basin was constructed when the market basket was constructed and included drainage connection locations for this pad. So in addition to managing peak flow, uh, our project also incorporates a water quality unit to provide additional water quality treatment um, prior to discharge to it seems like that would make sense when they developed um, the area. I wish that there was, is there something in there that yeah, states I mean, more clearly? Well, uh, Steve Peach did review that um, in detail that the drainage and did concur that it was more or less uh, supported all of us. They did plan, over plan for this, uh, in the original plans and the drainage okay. seemed to be adequate. And he had no issue really with the drainage the plan okay so and you can comment on that and you can view it right that's um, great in depth because that was that was such a good okay. um, plan or if you think of things that he had comments on and I was looking at that but he was finding the drainage and said it was fine. Okay, thank you. Nice job. All right, thanks. Um, okay so do we want to take a vote here on the groundwater additional use permit? Is there a motion? Would you like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to accept the groundwater permit. Approve the conditional use permit. I'll second that. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded. Discussion? All those in favor? Right. Aye. Okay. All right, so what's the next thing here? So the only other um, issues really which um, he mentioned were, you know, the septic, which is just based on who can stay and we did re resubmit that with much of the money might be um, which required uh, water. Is, a, is an issue, and they're aware, and I guess the water district is requiring planning board approval before they even accept an application, I understand? Yeah, that's part of their, their, part of their checklist of their application. Um, okay. On their checklist, they require zoning and planning approval as a prerequisite before going to the, the commission for their approval. So we have to, we have to, yeah. Um, How are you feeling this thing? Your right? project you first. You get approval from us at the least at 30 and they can see it. Yes, we're going to be going in front of the commission on the 30th if we successfully obtain additional approval. Okay. And in the past, I've seen that usually water districts will say there's water available. And there's not the data, we'll even find them with that, I understand. So just make a condition right. for approval that obviously they get all the required permits. And I guess if they can't get water, then I guess they have to come <laughs> back to do something them. else. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're not to get sorted out. Yeah. Yeah. They're not going to sort out, but they put it up on yeah. the Yes, okay. so we would just request that you know additional time that that the Tilton North the Water District, you know, approve our application for our application. And if you want to go through, I do have a second list for the board on what I thought the conditions so please. Yeah, I was just looking for it. Yeah. Okay, thanks. All right, yeah, so um, Ms. Moynihan has drawn a list for us to um, look over based on this proposed flat site plan, which is thank you very much. Um, take it, everybody got it? Got it. It says uh, final conditions of approval. Um, so let's see, if granted, so if we make this motion, acknowledgement is to be noted on the final plan. It's got water connection all the way down to, I'm not going to read them all, but the usual things plus some some other things particular to this plan like the water connection. So I'll just give you guys a minute.
put anything in there about design. So, yeah, the sorry. first item I think says substance um, design or state. Can I put that first? Water connection approval from. You don't have anything. Yeah. Something for I don't have something on it. I don't see it. Oh, yeah. Water. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, is it at the bottom? Well, no, it's the second. Or I just. On that one, I, I thought that had to do yeah. something else. Sorry. Still trying to learn your lingo. Sorry. Don't bother me. We have the light up 44. Is it 19 dash on 9? Yeah. Yeah. Site plan 19 dash. Okay. What are the conditions to, to be met? Um, Listed here. Listed on this form, which shall be submitted. Um, site plan. Second session discussion. Seeing none. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. I'd like to thank the board, and the staff, and the town for cooperation with that. We have pretty quick approval. We appreciate it. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. All right. Next, change of use permit. Um, Francois. Francois Pellerin of GMT Landscaping and Renovations. Request to change the existing use from retail office, which is was uh, or is canine clipping to a landscaping business with storage of salt and repair of small engines. Thank you. Yes. Thanks. Yes. Thank you. So, um, yes. Uh, did, did you all read? Um, There's another second packet, and then Cleon had uh, put in a, a brief overview of this in our notes. I'm just curious where the assault bill is going to be located for the Thank you. 
And then the de-icing chem chemical, that is that just alcohol or what is that bait? What's in there? Oh, it says de-icing also in somewhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. I So the only issue is, you know, obviously, I'm sure Ms. Moynihan pointed out that the, the groundwater uh, is prohibited in the groundwater protection. So I'm not sure about getting a, so you go before the zoning board, right? And you get a, a variance. Yeah. Well, I would say bulk could be, I, I think it's open for interpretation, your idea of bulk and my idea of bulk may be that, but it's something. We don't have it listed in the definition. You could have two tons of bags. Yeah. And, I mean, you could have 15 pallets of bags, right. and what's the difference between that and 15 yards? I don't know the math there, but. Well, pretty close to yards. So, my, my my question, my other concern would be, um, would the Conservation Commission want to take a look at this? Because... I would say they definitely would because the salmon line is right adjacent. Well, it's, 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 it's right down the road. And I, I have a concern about, I don't know that property well, but I'd be concerned about water leaching off the, you know, I don't know if we're, we're, I don't want to say leaching. Water coming off the pavement downhill towards the river, grabbing, you know, going through that salt and taking it directly to the river. I, I know you were saying you were trying to contain it, but without an actual containment system that is included, I don't know if. I think there's some. We had the limousine company come, and they, went, they were washing their vehicles there. that you want to know ahead of time. So I think that's tough for us to make a call on if, if you can meet all those conditions. You know, my guess is, is that you would be able to. It might just be you might have to do a little work and what, what you think okay. to make sure it's continued. Okay. Are, are we really just here to consider if this is a true change of use and would require site plan review, or is this You're, you're the board 
interpret, but I'm just pointing out what the ordinance says. Um, so I think he's just trying to get a feel for you know how, like, how, how what the possibilities before he gets too far down the road on this. Right. Um, that location has been everything under the sun. It was originally built as a welding building. It's a, a welder uh, owns it. I think still owns the property. And he had his welding shop there. Then he, they washed the limousines there. Then the guy who owned his kettle head had his electrician stored his electrician equipment there. So it's been everything in the sun. It's been a dog clipping and a hairdresser. Oh, yeah. I don't That's think there's much. You're, you're one of the few things that hasn't been there. <laughs> but I yeah. do think it's a good idea to have you see the conservation. Yeah, I think that may be uh, uh, in the in the plan, or at least for um, yeah. I think he would have to go to zoning right. first, and then I would think he would want to see a second round because it's a change, it's a total yeah. change with traffic and 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 um, the district and the other number of issues. It could be, yes. But the conservation doesn't mean it until probably middle of October, I would imagine. I'm sorry? Conservation doesn't mean it's probably until sometime in October. Right, and yeah, that's zoning as well, so I'm saying zoning. Yeah. 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 Well, it's not. Oh, I see. Now, permitted use. uses as well. So he has yeah. two obstacles. So he has the salt, which is pretty much a lot stronger of a of a particular hurdle because you know it's not water and salt, and it just says prohibited. Um, as far as permitted use, it's a mixed use district, and again, I refer to your zoning ordinance, and I really didn't know what box to put it in because um, it doesn't give you a category of landscaping business. Um, we have to work on that. What, what would you consider industrial? Which is not really retail. It's not um, some agriculture is in a lot of that area, so it didn't allow um, people came out of that. But it was greenhouses, uh, you know, like a commercial greenhouse and warehouse. Um, mixed use is you know, not allowed, but it's not really a green like you say. It's not really a greenhouse, so. I don't know what I, pocket I you put it in. I believe if it's not specifically listed as prohibited, then it's allowed. I believe that's how it goes. Yeah, if that's what you, is that what you put in practice, that's fine. That's why I, I think that's, that's just fine. legal. Um, legally how it goes. But I'm not. Because we don't have it, yeah, we don't have it prohibited specifically. But that that's yeah, I mean that's my opinion Um yeah, this I I it's the salt uh, containing it, um you could it seems like it's possible to, to get a variant. I don't know what the zoning board would say. Right, that's a lot, correct? No, no. Yeah, I mean, it is near the river. If it flooded, the, I'm sure the Conservation Commission would want to know if we had a flooding event, what's the pot, what are the, what's the possibility of the salt being put? I don't know.
they would be gone. So that's not how that would hold in the uh, But I want to keep it, it wouldn't be a year round storage. Well, what happens if, let's say, you buy a truckload of salt on March 1st and all of a sudden the snow goes away and we're done for the year? Generally, it's either approved or not, you know, because the seasonal thing is too, too iffy. Yeah, and I don't want a site plan on this either. Exactly. Site planning, that's illegal or it's not, not uh, kosher as far as uh, procedure here because we're not here. To, we can't site plan it. Right. But, uh, sorry, it couldn't be, we can't be more. No, I wish we could be, yeah, I wish we could help you more and, and give you more of an, more of an answer. Unless somebody knows of goes well, that back, back farther in the history. Yep. That's also legal. Yeah. 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 Yeah predict what exactly how it's going to go. We can't site plan it now, but. But you would want to see a site plan, is that yeah. what you're saying? So yeah, yeah. yeah. So the reality would go to zone to see if they'll agree with salt, if that's what you want to do. And then you would then come in here and get a separate second review from what we're going to do. But you are going to approve the salt search. They would not take that into consideration. Once you have that variance, you have the variance. Right, exactly. So they're not going to say no because of the salt. Then they would do a resident and show the site for the trucks. Whatever you're doing, like, yeah, trucks coming in. Just out. whatever, uh, you know, a butter's half, you know, you know, it's whatever, yeah. Would, would conservation make a recommendation to zoning? Yeah, they would have to go, they, yeah, they would, they would, conservation would come to the zoning. Once they apply for zoning, they would notice conservation and they would have to do their review. Okay, yeah. You're okay with excuse. Yeah, I yeah, think so. I, I I don't see any Issues. There's not. It's not specifically stated, so I don't see how we have. Well, yeah. Just say, you know, I went ahead and not the walls on the place, and I just say, I'm going to solve it, and I'm not going to get across the cross or anything. So I'm going to be able to run across it. I'm already going to be making a mess of it. So you still want to set your new thing and do the solve? Is that correct? I mean, what do you all think? I would have some concerns just about um, drainage of, of different things. But about what? Like drainage, the drains in there and where things would run off. And have like no we, no, no wash your cars and soap yeah. and oil and whatever. Yeah, I mean, like we did with the other landscaping. Uh, one that's in a mixed that's use right next to the residential.
Right, if you're not changing, not changing that, not you don't need age. You just need basic, you know, to yeah, scale. As is, yeah. Well, that's pretty much the reason why we would want to see this. Yeah, yeah. You know, but I would help the site come up and add up. If everything stays existing, yes. Yeah, but they, they might be concerned about having has to provide information like how many trucks are going to be, what's the other trucks are going to be, are they going to be, you know, the trucks are morning and night, where the laundry will be, what's the other one, might be an office. Right, again, we're not set planning. No, no I get it. I just can't let it. How many employees do you have? How many cars are you parked there? I mean, you have 10 guys who drive these trucks. They're not parking the cars there. give you sort of a, a basic list and it's just we all it's pretty boilerplate and then it also gives the public an opportunity that live near that area to come in and if they if they heard about the business to, to talk to you ask you questions etc. So I think
Yeah, I guess it's something to think about. Um, yeah, just, but I assume it would be up to the clubs or zoning board to answer that? Zoning for the salt. And the site plan is off. Awesome. absolutely right and then it's easy for us to say or an applicant to say I'm only going to have a couple trucks or something and then you know we want to see that on paper because lo and behold but, but you know, we, we want a record of that so just in case yeah you know, things change and then say the business is a lot more successful and then it becomes a major traffic zone over there I don't any number of odd things can happen that would disturb the Dynamic of the whole neighborhood. So that's well, why we have a public park. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we need more traffic. I'll give you an example. Right across the street from where you're talking now, there's a farmhouse. Okay? That, at one point, the person who lived there sold garage doors. And do you remember when they came before the planning board? It was a big issue because. And if we had had a site plan, we wouldn't have known what, what was going on. She was having tractor trailers deliver the garage doors, and then customers came here to pick them up. So that changed the whole traffic pattern that was an issue. Unless you come in with a site plan, we don't know how many trucks you have. We don't know where you're going to park those trucks. You might say, well, I'm not going to change anything that you're probably going to want to put a sign. There's nothing unless you do a site plan to let us know that you're not going to cover the whole front with a fence that can sign on. So that, that's why we need to see all this. And if you have 20 employees and they each have a car, that's important. Where are they going to go? So I if you want to do zoning and planning, I don't think there's anything that prohibits us from noticing. If you want 
has applied to the planning board, even though he hasn't been to the zoning board yet, but he's going to the zoning board before them. So we could notice in timely for the planning board meeting after zoning board, he would go to zoning board, we would know the decision because you have to make a decision, um, you know, has to be made timely. Um, so we have to know some of the days So we would have to make a decision unless, I guess, unless zoning, the only, the only thing that might be if zoning doesn't make a decision and they take it because they want to do more research or they want to, that's, that's another problem. But so then we could just, but then you could just, get just, just cancel it here. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. Plan. So the fastest you could go would be prior to the planning board for the meeting following, which is one of the gap the zoning board meeting, which would be the third Tuesday and the fourth Tuesday of October. And best case, get a zoning board decision that night. We're going to be planning on the next week, but that's we're not going to do something like that. So whatever the third issue is going to be. The third is the first one is the second. The first, the fourth, the first, the second, the third, the second. Business, Mr. Is Morissette. Yes. Would you like to come up and what you had uh, some? Yeah, guys. I, I uh, I'm an informal guy. I'm a Ned New Hampshire guy. I uh, I'm a real estate developer, an auctioneer. I've owned over 350 units of real estate in New Hampshire. I've developed commercial, industrial, land, and real estate. Uh, I own 40 percent of the main town in Franklin, the, the Main Street Bridge to Bridge. I recently sold it to Franklin Savings Bank. One of the buildings they put their investment office, the renovating the building. I don't know if you've seen that down there, but I was uh, instrumental and was at the beginning because I own 40% of the Main Street. And Todd Workman, if you know who he is, he's the guy responsible for what happened in Franklin. He's a very close personal friend of mine. We talk all the time. I've tried to get him to spread out this way a little bit, uh, but he's pretty busy down there. Um, it's selfish because I own. I own a building and I, I own the building across where the uh, street where the laundromat is. I bought it at a foreclosure auction from Franklin Savings Bank. I was buying all the foreclosures. I wasn't doing business in this town. But that, I bought that and after that I bought the St. Anne Press building, who I've now sold to a friend of mine uh, who owns it from Manchester. And, um, and uh, he wants to sell it. And I had some big ideas what I wanted to do and when I originally came uh, to the town, that was probably 12 years ago. It uh, you know, wasn't so friendly. So what I did was I tried to make it cash flow. Um, the problem is, uh, as everybody knows, basically there's no retail business left for these small downtowns. We dealt with it for Franklin for years. I don't know how many hours, maybe 2,000 hours. I sat with Todd while we tried to figure this mess out in downtown Franklin. And, um, you know, it. it, it to fix this stuff, it requires a lot of work, uh, more more of a labor of love than anything else. We don't really make much money doing this stuff, you know. And uh, so, anyways, uh, I, me and my wife decided to, uh, to sell all the properties. This is one of the last ones I got. I own stuff in Bristol and uh, many, many towns, but predominantly a lot of stuff in Franklin because I had my auction business there and originally wanted to help the town and had some big ideas and then ran into some of the we have to be basically not for profit to make this work. And so anyways, uh, I came up here. I wanted to make the building look a little better. My buddy Dave Libertori lists all my property. He said, I said that right now. You know, Jim Reagan's over there. He does the development work. I don't know if you know. They're huge, huge. Uh, they're down the street. Great people. 
So, so anyways, I, I talked to them, and I, you know, and, and I was going to just list the building as it was, but I figured I wanted to leave town better, so I put a new roof on it. We're going to paint it. We're going to put siding on the other side. It's going to look the part. The problem is we can't make these things cash flow with these with, with these commercial units. You might as well leave them vacant because by the time you put someone in there, by the time you're done throwing them out and redoing the thing to put someone else in, and I spent ten thousand of advertising last year to rent one of these three stores, you know, and and, and I don't even have nobody even called me, so. Mm. I'm up here and I want to fix the, the end unit that used to be a sound studio. And um, I never fixed them up because I had butt heads a lot with Brad Over when he used to run the fire department as he basically thought he was in Manhattan throwing out building codes that basically shut down any construction on the main street, you know. And um, so now here I am, he's gone, and I either have to put you guys another thousand square foot vanilla box commercial store so I can list the thing so you know it's a viable rental unit and I can tell you what's going to happen it's going to sit there empty for years you know the uh, the laundromat we've got somebody in there we charge him seven hundred dollars a month rent we can't charge him anymore because they'll just close the doors but I mean that's absurd you know with the amount of rents we're charging so you know on my way out of town I had an idea and I said listen I'm going to either talk to my buddy Dave through Elmwood's branch where they buy real estate and redevelop it and their landlords into buying the thing off me. And, and you know, they could put apartments in there. But I, I first want to go to the town because I think I know it's a good solution to what's going on in this town. And we didn't do it in Franklin. We almost were, and there's some, it's possibly going to go on now. But basically what it comes down to is they call them live work units, okay? okay. Basically what happens is, you know, in that particular unit, I think it's 900 square feet, right? We do first class stuff. I strip it all out. Hopefully they let me go all the way up to the ceiling because it's got 12 foot vaulted ceilings in the thing, you know, but I'm going to be in a fight over a fire protection issue. I'm hoping that we still have to put sheet rock and cover it up. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to start with that store. I'd like to put a little storefront in the front of it for perhaps a service business like a, a, an accountant or a, a lawyer or you know and, and any kind of service business or even a little small retail shop where they don't technically have to make a big living out of it because they live there and, and basically the rent cover you know the covers both it's got a really unique cellar in that building because it sticks out 18 feet over the river okay and I think I could do some wild kitschy thing where I put a little storefront in the front an apartment in the back and a stairway to go down into the basement where we could basically put a sliding glass door on what amounts to a dock over the river, but it's enclosed inside. And somebody could put a couple of kayaks in there and have a nice little business and, you know, good quality of life in town with some really high-end cabinets and plumbing fixtures. And what's happened now, if you talk to Jim Reagan over at Elmwood, they have 2,500 units Elmwood of rental units. But what's happened to the rental market is what we, what's happening, they want to shrink them down to really small, like 700 square foot units, and put ultra high end finishes in there. Because basically that's where the market's going. And so I thought about either I, I do it and then sell the building in the spring, you know, or I get approval from you guys, because we're limited to four units in these commercial buildings, and this already has four residential units, so I'd have to get a variance from the board. Well. I'm 55 and been doing this for 35 years after going to a lot of these different towns, right? I could end up in there for a year, you know, have meeting after meeting, men this, concern about this, but I don't want to get in that situation. So I, what, I, what I did was I, I went and I talked to Jeannie Forrester, who I know very well in politics, and a lot of the other people I know in town, and I was hoping to get a feeling from you guys, you know, how you guys feel about it before I waste my time and bring it to the planning board or I put a vanilla box in there because I think that's just going to be a waste. And, uh, you know, to see how you guys feel about it. I think if it works, I think you ought to do it with a lot of the stores, a lot of the storefronts in this town. Clean up a mess, bring some quality of life back to town, you know. And, um, you know, the problem is most of the people that are buying all these buildings, they're just buying the cash flow. I mean, I'm so ashamed of that building. I have a silent partner, my nephew, on the thing. I never even come up with because we simply cannot justify fixing that building. I could spend, 
you know, I can burn a hundred thousand dollars at my house, you know, rather than do that, and not get any more rent. You know, I think you get a better quality of tenants. I think you get a better quality of business. I think you get a better quality of life. You know. I agree. Yeah, and I don't know if you know what I'm. I'm the chair of the Main Street Committee too. And oh, I, 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 I was coming to you uh, now. I was coming to you now. But personally, I, I, what's, I what's think that's name, great. Please? Juliet Harvey. Oh, I, um, Julie, okay. They weren't expecting me today, but that's <laughs> okay. No, I, I, I would like to hear what everybody else thinks. But uh, I, um, one of our things, you know, one of the things we're doing in New Hampshire is the uh, accessory dwelling unit to bring forward more creative ideas to smaller dwelling units. This would be great. And I think that's just traditional business, how little shops used to be. I tried this before. You, you, yeah. you already have it done. I own the St. Vanny in this. I was going to build five condos in that building. You'd die. Okay? And, you know, I did it in Bristol. One of, you know where the, uh, uh, the twin uh, twin designs it's in Bristol. It's this little yeah. green store on the front. They've been on New Hampshire Crossroads, I think, five times. They got a turtle in there, let's say 35 years old. They own from when they were kids. They do uh, advertising, local gifts, and stuff. They're very well accepted. I took that building. Oh, the, the health guy, the health food store guy, he lives there. He lives But he lives upstairs, doesn't he? No. I don't know. I, I, I don't even he know. I don't go in there. But. Yeah, no, I don't know. He doesn't. He told me he lives there, and that's the only way that he can afford well, that's that place is that he lives in the same space. That's, well, okay. The, well, the, I don't know. the problem is he's tried to try to sell that to me. Everybody's tried to sell it to me. Okay. The problem the problem is he can't rent that to anybody. He's paying taxes and he's trying to get something out of there. He's making twenty five cents in there. Wait, wait. Well, which the, 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 I don't even know the, the, the organic food guy. The, yeah. The or, yeah. Uh, yeah. He's trying to sell it. Well. He, in the past, he was trying to sell. Oh, okay. He couldn't sell it, and then he put that store back in it because yeah. he was just trying to do anything to get any cash flow. Out oh, of it. okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, as you can see, we have a pro We have a bit of a problem here with empty storefronts down here. And, 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 and here's your chance like to you try say, something different. Cash My expense. Um, cash flow and absentee landlords who. Well, the other thing you can let me do, I'll condo it up. It's less than ten. Okay. We'll whack that up and. You know, and you have private ownership. We talk about that. That's what's going to happen in Franklin. You haven't seen the plan yet, but the no. the, uh, the the the, uh, the bank paid me 1.4 million for three of the main buildings on the street. I sold it to them because of what they were going to do there. You know, and Todd was in on the plan. He's actually project managing the whole thing. The first thing is what you you've been in to see what they did with their investment, the vision in that building. It looks like you in Manhattan. They spent half a million dollars on the public I I heard. I've been trying to follow it. So what, what does everyone else think about this plan? We need something different on Main Street, for sure. The biggest challenge I see is we need big draws to pull people from next to um, You're right. What do you and, got? And the other issue that we have, obviously, is parking on Main Street. That building's got about 12 spaces. Okay. That's I might be better ones. Okay. Yeah. That's one of the better ones, but I'm in a constant fight. I could be an ass, excuse my language, and I told 75 people out of there. Half the people that go to sure. this building right here, park there. It's a constant battle because I can't even keep tenants in there, let alone commercial, because they don't have any parking the tenants have to. I think the apartments need I mean you got parking in the back, that's what Franklin does because we have You've got parking behind the end. Yeah, and you've got parking behind the end. Absolutely, absolutely true. You know, the for, for, for somebody who's coming here as a destination spot, it's very difficult for them to find that parking. Okay. Um, and 90% of the traffic that's coming down through here is residents. They're, they're headed towards Franklin, in over wherever. Well, I have to actually add to that because I actually sat a couple weekends ago and counted license plates. And they were about 50% Massachusetts, really? New England, other states, New York, license plates okay. down here. Surprisingly well, enough. Well, they is, and they are here, Thank and they are out here. Let me explain something to you that you probably don't know, because this is all going to change, okay? 
There's 19 water parks, red, white, 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 white water rafting parks in the United States. There's probably more now, but when we made the deal to do the one down there, there was 19. The people that did this all around the country that are coming here to do this one, three and a half million that they've already got that's coming a couple I of know. miles from here. It's a, it's a big thing, and we should yeah. totally... Well, well yeah. but it's bigger than you think. Yeah. Because they think this will be the most successful one in the United States. And the reason that they think that is not just because of the vertical drop we've got here, it's because the course ends in the town. So everybody's not going to be out in the willy wags, take the boat out and go home. It's going to be a big party down there. They're currently negotiating. I still own the Regal. I moved my auction business because I needed more space. And because the mill that I was in got sold to Chinburg Properties, that's the big mill, Franklin you know, Franklin Business Center, they're going to spend $15 million on that. I've been, I've, I've, I've been talking with them and, and telling them information and counseling them on the thing. Big stuff is going on down the road. Money's committed. It is. Okay? I, I'm like, I want to start, I want to invest in this. And about something. five people, me being one of them with a big will, push this through that town, who's now every politician in town is taking credit, and government employee that's is taking credit for it, and they right. fought us into the ground. It cost Todd his marriage. And, you know, he's down there, and he's, put, he's pushing it through. And now, they're all in favor, right? But they fought me for 25 years. I tried to do this 25 years ago, and we're going to bring them all kinds of money. Don't make the mistake that they made. You should use that as, as, as a building point. And, and I'll go see them. They're going to they're gonna fool around me with four zoning board meetings. I'm going to put it up and say I'm just selling the building. But I can, show, I, I can do something for you over there. Or I'll make Dave and those guys do it. You know, uh, that that could be a catalyst, you know. Yeah, no, I think we're, we're poised for it. It seems like, I, I could talk about this for hours, and I don't want to hold up the board. <laughs> yeah, the company what kind of a Main Street meeting. I'd like to. Uh, when would you like to meet? We'll make it when you can come and visit. Uh, usually it's, um, what do we have, Wednesdays, at Wednesday afternoons? Oh, uh, like regularly. Yeah, like the third then, uh, Wednesday of the month. I forget his name. The Harper guy, Bill is the Harper store. He's part of that. Bill. 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 He sometimes, yeah. Lauren, I can do, yeah, we try to do the business for well, it. You know, yeah. that, that's a prime building for that. That's not going to survive. Yeah, yeah. Put down your um, your contact yeah. info. and. and, and I could go on and on. Basically, it seems like nobody wants to have retail stores. And like some other people say, that own businesses, we don't have any darling shops. Um, that's not what I said. That's what um, lady yeah, there that, from that, the, that, that's what, <laughs> the wedding place down there, she's like, I don't have any darling shops to send my clients to down here. Nobody yeah, wants to have retail. I'm going to tell you the problem, right? In, in Franklin. Right? Oh, they were so in the Main Street that everybody should, the building owner should fix them up, right? So, we, 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 I, one of my friends owns one building. Put it, somebody wants to put a coffee shop, but they got no expense. So, we start putting a restaurant in there, right? You know, and I got people complaining to me, and they're holding a Dunkin' Donuts coffee cup, and they're, and they're saying, Where's all the shops on the Main Street? I said, Why aren't you buying your coffee there instead of up there? You know? Right, yeah. It's, it's it, it's a really tough goal. We've already been through this for so many so many years. I can stop you from all the pitfalls you have. Uh, you know, if I had yeah. another idea to tell you, okay, because we've been through every single one of them, okay, I, I would. But yeah. short of you guys doing what he did and putting a nonprofit together where you can buy the buildings up, because I I sold the building that the bank did down there. They put half a million dollars into a couple commercial units, right? On the ends, a lawyer's unit that he renovated, and I rented it to them. Okay, he's got uh, 1,200 square feet. He's the lawyer for the bank. Now he's on the side of the investment. He was paying us $900 rent for that. We spent 40,000 to renovate the unit. It was going to take me five years to get my money back. But if I don't count the taxes and the insurance and all that stuff, it's like you know, it's a labor of love. Let me, try, yeah, yeah, yeah. let me try to do this down there, two of the units. I think you guys will be shocked. I want to live in the apartment, sit out on the river with the barbecue, put my kayak out, you know, right. yeah. fish floating out. Yeah. And then yeah. underneath there, underneath the building, when we poured the piers, right, we sat under there, you sit under there, we had lunch and party and some beers and fish are floating all around you, we put lawn chairs, and it's the most beautiful thing, it's so, you know, and it sits there, and that whole strip sits there, and those ugly buildings, and the siding's falling off the back, and we can't get ten cents to rent them. We 
put all these welfare tenants in there, it's like I want to go, uh, you know, this isn't in the middle of the desert, you know, we're in a beautiful area with that river sitting there and oh, I know. nobody it's got wants so much to potential. Lift finger, you know? It's got a ton of potential. That's what's so frustrating to everybody. But anyway, thank Anyhow, you very much. I don't know, does anybody have anything to add? <laughs> so you think it'd fly if I push it? Put it this way, you would I be coming to you guys? Is there any reason to come here? No, but you guys are the planning board, so I wanted to hear what you have to say. That's why I came. I haven't started with Jeannie. Oh, I you mean Jeannie, go back. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I talked to her. She's all in favor. I went over, I talked to the fire department. You know, yeah, see, I'm personally in favor. I think it, it, that's what we're supposed to do. It's, that's part of the accessory dwelling unit, though it's not exactly what it says in the exe accessory dwelling unit law, but it's got the same idea. Uh, yeah. And then I, uh, I, I apologize. I'll let I, you guys go home. I know it was long winded. The board, it. It's not. It's not really up to me either, personally. So. No, I know, but this town tends to go, to go in waves. I watched it. <laughs> it sure does. First thing we got to do is get the approval of the selector. Yeah. Yeah, I've talked to them a couple times. Yeah. You know. For for what exactly? Politics. I know what you get there. Politics. Well, I mean, I don't, is it really you think they'd be in favor? Some. I, mean, I, don't, I don't see how you could. What, you had, what your objection really realistically is. Well, you know what we've seen in Franklin? We bring money to town, right? They, didn't have, they don't have 25 cents of their name. We bring money to town. When Todd went there, he bought the first building. The city was already suing the previous owner, okay? You know what they did? They turned around and pushed the lawsuit on to Todd. Well, he's there to renovate the town. They look at, we come in from out of town, they go, oh, we got a fish on the hook. Now we can bring it up to Manhattan standards, you know? You know, as we get 25 cents for rent and everybody runs for the hills. Right, that's, yeah. you know, and that's, that, that's it, so. Yeah, thank you. I thank appreciate you. people taking an interest yeah. in the town. Thank you for coming in. Yes, thank you very thank much, you. appreciate it. for shorter plans that can be easily shared. And that is what it says on the state website. Because people 
go and they hire somebody for a great cost and be, because they want the money to work for a year and produce a 100, 200 page document. That is, I don't know why you want that, honestly. I think it's too big and nobody reads it. Um, just from my experience, I, I worked at Plymouth, they did a giant master plan and we can see from the website place that it's really not being read. <laughs> so I don't see the point of, of this long, big long uh, master plan if nobody's going to read it. I, mean, I don't know. That's just I, me. I know exactly what you're talking about. So yeah. I understand the point. I think the longer they are, the less chance they do. It should be a living, working document of the town. And it should be the stuff that it's never been. But I would yeah, think you'd be able to give them done. guidelines on how. Right. I mean, it doesn't should, have to be that. that. And um, I know there's a lot of, I call it inventory information. I know your first best friend didn't have of documents and maps and how much open space you have, how much open space you have to work I haven't been here very long, I've been a lot of, well, I mean, this, there's no land left to build, like nothing's going to develop, there's just no development. That's not as true. Well, right, I don't think it is true, right? I mean, this is some of the talk, like, so, um, you know, I think if, um, if it was a consultant, they would probably do more of, you know, you need an estimate that shows what is the potential, what do we have left to develop, what is the build-out, a build-out study, that type of thing. I don't know that this board, you know, is it, it has the time to do a build out study, right. for example. And that's one example. Um, you know, you do have the river, so you do have a lot of wetlands, you do have a lot of, you know, conservation area or groundwater um, protection district that has to be considered. Um, also, the potential for growth because of the river. I mean, you know, people like that. So there, there are a lot of, and yeah, I mean, I don't, go with this. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of ways. Tonight, but yeah. I did want to let you know that was going on, and when I'm going to hear it, Say why is she going out and getting an RFP? Like we would be doing ourselves. Yeah. Um, we don't have to decide tonight. I'm sorry, I really wasn't prepared with all the relations to discuss it, but um, that's what's going on on the other side of the office. It's been okay. Going on for 15 years. Okay. Well, right, and you we we one one time, time, tell you that we, we at one time say, had money in in the land use budget to be able to pay for a master plan. So I mean, it's, this is not new. Well, and, and, yeah. and I think if you do hire someone, or if you were to go in that direction, it, I mean, they work with you. They certainly don't, you know, write the master plan for you. Well, I don't see it that way. And we maybe would have, you know, it would be a steering committee that would work right. with them. And they would kind of help guide yeah. some of these bigger projects. And it's still, it's, it's still the planning board's master plan. They're still very involved in you know, the subcommittee and that person and myself, you know, working to, it's, it's yeah. still, a, you know, a group effort, so to speak. But, um, but it's a little different direction than just saying this board is going to do an update, you know, we'll survey, we're going to do a little piece that and do a brick. You know, this kind of a little different. So anyway, that's kind of my point of speech on that. But we still have to do the vision session and I mean Yep, so they get this so they get um, public it's it. Yeah, that kind of stuff. I mean, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be averse to, to some limited hours, but I don't want to see it go into a, a multi-year project because that's sometimes how they go. Absolutely. Very, Absolutely. very long, involved, and by the time you're done, the whole board's turned over because it's been years later. And so, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, all right. Anyway, thank you for letting us know. We can talk about the agenda. We can find a little more I'll discussion about the direction. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right. Turn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Anybody want peach muffin and cake? Okay. Peach. Peach cupcakes. Uh. Please take some. Allergic to peach. Oh, you are. Okay. Can you take? Pictures? Oh, just now? Are you serious? Oh my gosh. Yeah, good. Well, maybe the side door was just popped open. Simple joke says that too many of them.